What's up guys, back again with another episode. So I had a lot of fun with the format of the 100 subscriber special, with the level 1, 2, and 3 getting more intense with each story. So I decided to try it out again and see what you all think. So if you enjoy it, let me know down in the comments below, and maybe we can make a series out of this. Alright, enough talk, let's get with the stories, see you in a bit. Let's start it off with level 1, Pro Revenge. Boss wouldn't pay me the money I earned, so I had his company shut down and other FU moments. Last year, I started working for a local plumbing company that seemed promising, would pay top dollar to employees for good old fashioned labor, so I signed my W-2 and went on my way. Seems legit, right? I started out making hourly wage and was given my own work van and was offered a work cell phone. However, if you use your personal cell phone, the owner of the company would pay your bill because you're using your own phone. How neat is that? Fast forward a month or two. I was forced to make commission based off every job, and I didn't have a say in this. But 20% off every job you do? Hell, that's a lot of money in plumbing, so I was none the wiser. Eventually, I found out that my paychecks weren't having any taxes taken out of them, so I asked my boss, why am I not having taxes taken out of my check? To which he replied, when we switch you to commission, you're a subcontractor now. You're a 1099. You're gonna be making so much bank now, bro. I didn't sign a 1099 form, but okay. As time went on, I started working 90 hours a week with no break. If my phone was turned off and the office folk tried to reach me, and they couldn't, they would take money out of my paycheck. The phone bill never got paid. There would be days where I wouldn't even make a single dime because the boss would mess something up in our system. We also had no heat in our vans, and when it got to negative 40 degrees outside, his words to us were, go buy an effing blanket. I can't afford repairs like this right now. While he's off in Florida on a cruise with his whole family. So like anyone else, I just up and quit. Screw that. When I left, I asked for my paychecks. I was owed three of them for the weeks I worked. But my boss wasn't ready to give them up yet. You screwed me over, and now I'm gonna screw you over. He said when I asked why he wasn't gonna pay me. I offered multiple times to just meet him so he wouldn't have to go any further. He refused. I took to r slash legal advice, bless them, and asked what I should do. The response led me to LARA, Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs, to file a wagon claim to get my money. But on top of that, I filed a report with them stating the company doesn't pull permits, which is required to do when replacing people's plumbing. So they sent over an investigator to check the claims out. I then went to the IRS to find out about this whole tax ordeal. I filed the proper paperwork to have the IRS check and see if I was misclassified as a 1099 employee when I should have been a W-2 employee since they weren't taking taxes out. Sure as hell, I was wrongfully not getting taxes taken out of my checks. So the IRS sent an investigator of their own. Now at this point, I see on my phone that I still have their email address linked to my Google account. So I do some snooping. Turns out they hadn't paid city taxes in over six years. And that the office manager, a woman who has verbally abused me time and time again, collects disability through the state, but still collects a 1.5K paycheck from the company every week. You can bet your ass I sent this with the IRS, including screenshots in my email. This is how it all unfolded. I have a friend that still works, or rather worked for them at the time, and he told me about the investigators coming in. LARA fined them upwards of $50,000 for failing to produce the proper permits for work that was performed. They also paid me what the company owed me, with interest, since I waited over a month for those paychecks. On top of this, the IRS made them pay for my taxes at the end of the year took away the officer's disability, audited them because they'd never paid their city taxes, and fined them for each employee they did this to. At this time as well, all of his fleet vans were broken due to wear and tear. This resulted in the company closing. When he asked me, why did I do this? My response simply was, you screwed me over, so I screwed you over. Hey, there's certain things in life you don't mess with when it comes to a man and the paycheck he needs to feed his family is most certainly on the top of that list. 
And now it's time for level two, nuclear revenge. Destroy my mailbox? How about I end your football career? So, I live in a small suburb in the Dallas-Fort Worth area of Texas for most of my young life in the 80s and 90s. In this town, high school football, edit, American football, where everyone smashes into each other like a bunch of savages, hell yeah, Merg, was like a local religion. And the booster club was like the mafia, even going as far as to buy off the cops to let their precious football star kids run amok across the town, usually pinning the blame for their shenanigans on bad kids like myself. I wasn't popular. In fact, I was quite the opposite, because in a small town in the mid-90s, a nerdy, grungy metalhead like myself with no interest in sports, stuck out like a sore thumb. My home and property was often the subject of vandalism, much to me and my dad's annoyance. The most annoying thing was having to buy a new mailbox like every few days because it would get smashed to bits. One day, me and a couple pals were poking around in the scrapyard when we found a metal pole with a flat piece of metal across the top. I see where this is going. Ideas started churning in my head I dragged it home, along with some other metal scraps, and welded together a 100-pound invincible steel mailbox and cemented it in the ground where our flimsy stainless steel one used to be. My dad high-fived me for my ingenuity and welding skills I learned in shop class. Over a week went by, and no mailbox incidents happened. But at school, there was a huge buzz because one of the star football players seriously screwed up his shoulder. He had a football scholarship waiting for him when he graduated, but that was ended, as his injury left him unable to play ever again. I never put two and two together until my dad's got a summon to court for malicious injury of this idiot. Turns out that the jackass was the one who destroyed my mailbox. He would have his friends drive past my house with a car at high speeds while he smacked it with a baseball bat while he leaned from the passenger side window. When I installed this solid steel mailbox, he tried the same shit and well, bye bye shoulder, bye bye football career. The lawsuit against me and my dad never got off the ground, the parents dropping it when the dad's lawyer successfully wrangled a change of venue due to a threatening answering machine message from the local booster club. I felt a little bad at first as I'd never intended to destroy the guy's dreams for the future, but now that I look back on it, he brought it all on himself being an entitled scumbag. It really had been a minute since we got a nice sweet mailbox revenge, so hell yeah to this one. And now it's time for level three, Supernova Revenge. Let's get it going. My granddad destroys the life of the guy who tried to kill my dad. I got to reading these and remembered an epic story of revenge that my granddad got after a guy tried to decapitate my dad so a thing to note is that my granddad was a brigadier general who took part in the Allied invasion of Italy and was an excellent strategist who had the respect of everyone in town. However, he was raised by a family of smart asses. So, in 1974, my dad was in high school and lived in a small town in Massachusetts and like his older siblings, was a smart ass and a bit of a troublemaker. Called him bomb threats to get out of school sort of thing. Oh my god. Well... One day, someone vandalized the house of one of the teachers. Let's call him Mr. P. Not exactly sure what happened, but I think something along the lines of trashing a garage and throwing paint all over. Mr. P had long hated my family, as my aunts, uncles, and dad would constantly mock him because he wasn't particularly intelligent and his students would often correct him. For some reason, Mr. P was convinced it was my dad who did it. He probably would have blamed my aunts and uncles too, but they were in Vietnam at the time. And for whatever reason, he had the genius idea to try and kill my dad. My dad had always been an avid motorcyclist, and at the time, he would frequently give girls ride past Mr. P's house, and he liked to go fast. One night, after a school function, a dance I think, my dad was giving a girl a ride home, and her place was two or three houses down from Mr. P. He dropped her off and was starting to speed off home when he noticed a metal wire strung across the street between two poles right at neck height for anyone riding a motorcycle. It was pretty obvious that the trap was meant for him. 
and my dad had been speeding down like normal, it likely would have decapitated him. Needless to say, my dad was both freaked out and pissed. He rushed home to get my granddad and show him the wire. My granddad was normally a calm and collected man who had seen a lot of military stoicism. But upon seeing the trap laid out to kill his son, my dad said he was more furious than he had ever been in his life. They went to all the houses in the area and got everyone's attention and demanded to know who set the trap. They found out it was Mr. P when someone told my grandfather that Mr. P had mentioned something about getting revenge on my dad for vandalizing his house. When they confirmed Mr. P did it, he didn't deny it. And my granddad promptly punched him in the face, knocking him out, and they went home. When they got home, my granddad interrogated my dad, demanding to know if he was actually the vandal. He was not. Mr. P was disliked by many of his students, and we never learned who actually did it. With that settled, my granddad said that he would destroy Mr. P if it was the last thing he did, that he would end him for having the nerve to try and kill his son. At this point, my granddad started planning personal war on Mr. P. But I'm not super sure of all the details because he intentionally left my dad out of much of it. So I only know what my dad was involved with and what he found out later. What we know is my granddad reached out to a number of contacts who served with him in World War II, told them what happened, and recruited them for Operation Black Paint. Yes, that's really what they called it. First, in summer of 1974, they broke into his house and sabotaged the plumbing, causing a toilet on the second floor to flood crap water all over. And the local plumber, who was in on the operation, while fixing the pipe, did something that caused a hot water tank to explode a few days later, further wrecking Mr. P's house. This apparently happened during a rough time in Mr. P's marriage, and these stresses apparently pushed it over the edge, and they got divorced. While he doesn't have any proof, my dad believes this was part of the plan. Later that year, just as school was starting, my granddad had someone remove the lug nuts from Mr. P's car, which predictably caused him to get into an accident. Mr. P was uninjured, but his car was wrecked. He was still broke from having to do repairs caused by the plumbing incident. Without a car, he frequently struggled to get to and from the school, and my dad would laugh at him by driving on his motorcycle while Mr. P walked to work. We also know that my granddad turned him into an alcoholic, leaving bottles of booze on his porch with a note saying things along the lines of, heard you were having a rough time. Here, take the pain off. Throughout the school year, Mr. P was growing increasingly stressed and depressed, and his alcoholism was beginning to show. In about March of 1975, my granddad gave my dad a bottle of scotch and told him to put it in Mr. P's desk at the school on the promise my dad would get a bottle for himself. He did. And that evening, the principal got a call saying that Mr. P had been drinking on the job. Mr. P was fired after they found half a bottle of scotch in his desk. Jobless, carless, recently divorced, depressed, and alcoholic, Mr. P decided to try and sell his home and start over somewhere else. My granddad also made this hell, as he had several people look at the house and had them sabotage it further while there, such as pouring glue into the kitchen sink and locking up the garbage disposal, salting the yard, and causing various small bits of damage to the property, while complaining at the poor state of the place. Eventually, Mr. P gave up on selling it and walked away with only the clothes on his back. My family sort of lost track of Mr. P for a few years before finding out he was a homeless wretch on the streets of Boston and was still a raging alcoholic. In February of 1978, with a historic snowstorm bearing down on them, my granddad found Mr. P under a bridge where he confronted him, told him that it was him who had destroyed his life and why. He then poured soda on Mr. P and walked away and proceeded to let him freeze to death that night. So, uh, remember what I said earlier about don't mess with someone's money? Yeah, forget that. Don't mess with someone's kids. Because if you do that, you might just end up dead under a bridge being homeless. Also, before you complain in the comments that this is fake, it might be fake and it might not. I can't be certain. But, come on now, that was a pretty good story either way. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed those last few stories. 
Let me know what you think about this new format. Are these progressively more intense revenge stories something you want to see more of in the future? If so, just leave it down in the comments below and we'll see if we can make a series out of this. Alright, well that's going to wrap it up for today, so I'll see you later. Peace out!